our little Henry one is looking rather a lot like that at the minute because he has been washed and is ready to go back together. But, and this is the butt. I don't want to put this motor back in it, mainly because when I came up with this plan, I was assuming that this would never work again and I wouldn't have to justify why I'm now taking out a perfectly okay motor and we're doing something else. But bear with me, it may be alright. If it's not, hey, we've got a plan B now. That's not too bad. So, I'm going to get all the sort of motoring parts out and then, well, we best get stripping down our donor machine. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how? are you today no your eyes are not deceiving you this is a Mila c2 extreme power line and i think it does work it does it works very well <laughs> Yes, my idea is to try and fit the motor from that into this and with all that goes with it. So, to start with, and I don't even have to be careful about this because I don't want this anymore. Look, it's got horrible. This is one of the leftovers from me in a fortnight that I have no tools for. It's not worth doing. So, it can all come apart for a bit of fun for us today. So, we'll have the switches off. Come on. Ah, there we go. Oh, I need this interconnect part there. A short time later we have everything that we need out of our meal and the motor which the machine says it's 1600 watts i don't actually know what this motor is i'll try and decipher i've just had a look for the type number but it's full of listings that are no longer available or have zero information so i actually know what what is this unit is doesn't matter should be a moot point this is the wiring harness for this motor the PCB and the speed control knob. Because yes, my ideal is to try and fit the speed control from this to our Henry 160. Um, yeah, that's what makes this a little bit of a more fun project. Because eyeballing these, I cannot help but notice that they look very similar to size which will hopefully be a big part of this mod is just the fact that we can use a motor that will near drop in. Ooh, I have to shave a little bit off. Ah, yeah, that's more rounded than this. If I can literally just chop the corners of each of those out, we might be in with a chance. No! 
some time later with various Dremel implements and sharp knives, we have the basis of it working. I just had to knock off the corner of each of the mounts by the motor and it fits and it seems to clear the wiring and I'm fairly sure that the, where's the other one? Oh, might have to cut the motor mounts up a bit, although one side will fit absolutely fine. And in fact, they're not really needed because this is a, this is pushing down on the mouldings of the motor. So as soon as that's clamped down, that's not going anywhere. Also, seems to sit completely happily in. Take this out because oh, we need to wire it up in a minute. It fits inside the original pneumatic motor mount. It's almost as if they knew that one day an idiot would be coming to fit a Mila motor to one of these. Right, let me get to the next stage, which is sort of like that, really. Even the original sound ending look, which washed up very nicely indeed, should push straight back into there. Like so. Cough. Looks very original, doesn't it? Now, like I say, this, this isn't going back together quite the right way because it's got to go in upside down. <laughs> but that's fine. I've also got to plug the cable in, which means, and I think after doing some research, maybe it's come out of here at all. We might be able to stay pretty much completely internal. I now need to find some space for the second thing that I need to do. The next thing that we need to do is to heat our soldering iron and on this board mark the polarity of this. As long as you do three same coloured dots corresponding to each corner the next step will go a little bit easier because yeah this whole part here has to come off of this board because we need it separately there we can see our speed control I think they're called a, a potentiometer is off of our board with the markings clearly on there for next time now using these three bits of wire we are going to extend the wires from these points so they come out of there ready for later and some questionably dodgy soldering later. We have three wires coming out from where our triac used to be. Not triac, potentiometer. The hot glue gun is also on the boil because the next thing that I've got to do is to try and fit this and this somewhere oh, under here. Let's give this a go. That didn't fit around the outside, so it's all been rearranged. I'm hoping heat isn't going to be a problem. We have our main feed wires. They need to be tapped off the side of that. We have our three speed control wires and our two switch wires here. Get it all buttoned up and together and then we'll move on to the next step. The lid is now on the motor housing and what I'm doing is connecting the incoming power wires from here with a little spur off to the side for something else which we shall get onto later when all this mess is back together. But hopefully once that is done and 
This bit is clipped on, hoping that all the joints will sit nicely under that bit. We will be looking a lot more sensible and ready to move on to connecting up the other stuff. And after a bit more working out, moving things about and trying things out, which is what projects like this are all about. We have this, our Henry is down and seated correctly. I had to chop out a little bit of there to get all the cables to run. It's quite fiddly, but also quite handy because this would have been underneath before and works all right. We have our first mod, which is no, our second mod because we've got a motor, a power socket from an old MV250. The minute crimped on like that with a bit of hot glue because the crimp is the wrong size, but there is a bit of a plan for that, so don't worry too much. I'm hoping this is going to work because on our Miele kit, we only have two wires because the PCB does the rest, so they're on one side of the original switch from this Henry, actually. I haven't put a red one on yet. I do have a red switch. I just don't know if it's going to be, at least if it's green, I can tell where it is. So we'll leave it green for now, but yeah, hopefully that will work. The next thing to do is these three wires, because, yes, the second part of this hack is I want to try and fit speed control to this pneumatic and create a speed control pneumatic. And it actually looks quite simple, because this is the cover that clips, oh look, I can even tuck those over there, that they kept the mouldings for when the PCB used to go in. That's quite handy. Oh, I should have utilised that, shouldn't I? Yeah. Maybe we will. That clips on there. And you can see there's already a small hole in there, and that's because this is our potentiometer. And it will fit in the back of there like that. And I'm going to have to leave a little bit of length on these cables and I'm going to have to tuck them up in there because we're going to have to get this on and off a little bit. But I'm hoping that we can fit it to the machine, which then leaves us onto this, which is the hood. And basically, I'm going to have to drill a hole, hence why I've marked the hole for... Oh, you can't even see that. There we go. Hence why I marked the hole so I can punch through sits on there and drill through the back of our hood hope it's in the right place otherwise i just ruined a heavy 160 hat the last bit which i have done sits underneath this hole because yes now has the speed control from the miele circuit board hot glued and hopefully soldered in place and that'll as you know goes off over yonder so with the original clip fitted we can hopefully i've not tested this yet got the cord reel in and i've got to wind it up because i've got to put that on the back then we can grab the cable exit grommet the same as every pneumatic slide it into place and then ooh, yeah, drop the lid on flip it upside down stick it back in the bucket and do up the screws and then on the back, we can see the other modification. I'm not entirely sure if it's right yet because I've sort of tried to mould a little pass-through bush using hot glue, which goes into there. But the problem is, I cannot. I don't think it's going in correctly, and I don't really want to twist it too much because I don't want to rip. I think that is actually stopping there. It will stop now from the potentiometer rather than the inbuilt mouldings from the Mila, but we can fit the wash filter. All of this has been washed and dried and
cleaned up mainly so that I could film this without getting completely disgusting. And we shall switch on. I have no idea if this is going to work. Go bang. Not do anything. We are doing this together. Are you ready? Oh. Uh, let's just check that. Oh. Uh, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Bother. How annoying. Time for some troubleshooting. Okay, reset to go again, everybody. The live cable was not plugged in to the top of the cord reel on the motor side. The cable is just a touch too short. So, it works. Oh my goodness. Oh, soft start. Now, the big question is. Ah. Whoa. Yes, folks, we've done it. We've made a. Admittedly, that needs. A, that's about the only bit that needs work. The rest of it, it's gone. Excellent suction. I mean. On its full setting, ah. it can hold. I can pick the whole machine up. Oh, this is brilliant! Right, let's get all this rubbish cleared up, and we'll use it. Use it. That needs to go back in next time we have it open because that is what came out. Ha! Oh, fantastic. Well, this is where the video gets completely unplanned because I'll be honest, I'm pleased we got this far at all so far that I've had to go and find tools. Now, this is not the conical hose that came with it. That is drying in the area cover. This is the long one that we have that I got from that free Henry for the MV200 and all of that malarkey. So this is just... Ooh... It's not screwing on for a start. They haven't changed the threads, have they? Or is this just a knackered old hose? It's going on. Okay, well, we'll leave it like that for now. So, yeah. Big, stupid overkill hose. Oh. I think that's absolutely fine. The problem it's doing is that massive bang you hear. It's actually this sucking itself in with the sheer air pressure of this. So we've got to be a little bit careful there. Right, oh look, I found some small tools for no other reason other than we can put them on the machine. That doesn't quite work like that there. And again, a little bit loose. I don't know, do they change the small tools to go with these machines, I don't know, but it is a very good idea. This is actually the original ones that we got. I managed to break the seal. Still got to clear it up a little bit. But yes, I managed to crack them apart. And that means I've also got to buy a new hose cuff for the other hose. Yeah, I wasn't going to do that until I worked out that we got this far. And yeah, I can put on this floor tool because well we can try the Henry cordless one but I don't think it's going to be very good and we can try and clear up some of the mess that we've made and we'll leave the machine oh. there we go oh look we just need a little bit more power oh no left power I still don't know which way around it goes It's just so impressively powerful. The air is quite cool as well. 
Well, it doesn't need to be that powerful. This is plenty. Where the hem recorder swords? Oh, ah, here it is. Let's try this one just for a half. It's not going to be particularly pleasant to use. And I'll drop the machine onto its lowest setting, which is probably about the power that the hem recorders have. Oh, yes. That's actually pretty nice. More than enough power from the 2200 watt I think that's in. I don't think it's a 1600 watt. I'll check the number. And if we put it on full power, I cannot really clear the colour. I can however. Oh my goodness. Yeah, oh, lovely for a quick spin around when, like, you know, it's not on full power, but ah, terrible for normal. Now, some of you have probably noticed that. Welcome back. Where? Well, you will notice this looks very familiar. Yes, and. All of this and going down to the power socket. Yes, I have modified this new pneumatic, which doesn't have power socket, or speed control to now have both. Now, slight drawback of this, either for now or forever, is that the power socket is actually wired straight from here. It doesn't go via the switch as it does on the older ones. That's obviously because I can't use the switch in the conventional way. If, if I put voltage to one side of the switch, it'll blow up the Mila PCB. So it is a little bit um, instant, shall we say. But it works really well as well. I mean, I can make it use all the power. Oh. Oh, I can just go down to a more sensible speed. so much more now than the machine itself. Oh, bless it. Yeah, this is definitely going to work better when its actual hose is dry. And I can use it as a strength suction cleaner because, yeah, this is... I've washed the hose now so it can go back together. And I need to uh, work on that a bit more. But, uh, it huh. but it does work. It is very stupid. Hey! I think I have the only Henry 160 which has adjustable. Well, that was adjustable speed control and a power socket as well, although one that isn't switched. Obviously, cannot dock this onto there. We'll have to wait until I've got. No! Don't break that. That's important. Oh, I think that probably won't be in time for the next video, maybe. I don't know, but I think this isn't working. Well, obviously it works, but it's not working or anything. What I've got to try and do is find a panel mount one so that I can, you know, probably use that same hole and just have a proper knob because that's just stuffed in. And it works, but it's not perfect. Off. 
but it isn't ideal. So yeah, I think a bit more improvement to do. This hose definitely doesn't like going onto this machine. That's very strange. In fact, I've got the original, I've got the new hose cuff here. Oh yeah, that's much different. Oh, they changed, they have changed them, yeah. Blimey. Oh. I can't even fit the new cuff to the old hose because it's not a conical hose. Oh well, problem for another day. I'll be honest, the next time we see this, we probably won't have all of this set up. Anyway, it'll just be this because, yes, there is one more video. We have, well, we got it working, then we modified it. Now it's time to give it some Christmas sparkle. And hopefully, tomorrow, on Christmas Day, I can show you my creation. So until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I, and my custom Henry 160, will see you soon. Bye-bye.